All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another lunch and learn with Film TT. Today's session is facilitated by Mr. Chilgast. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, I have to cool. All right. Um, Mr. Best is a member of the Film Censorship Board, Trinidad and Tobago. He's an avid actor, director, lecturer, film industry practitioner, cinematographer, and a whole lot of other stuff. Yes, all those things. All right. And we want to uh, thank him for facilitating this lunch and learn. I will now pass it over to Mr. Best and his team. All right. Good afternoon, guys. My name is Shay. I am just like you all, filmmaker, Trinidadian, and like Leslie always has to say, you know, we all have to go through those moments of kumbaya and and working together to facilitate and figure out how we come together and work in this ecosystem. Thank you for the introduction. I also have the cold as well, so if you hear me coughing, please bear with me. So there's a lot of things that go on with film censorship, but what but we're gonna I'm going to run through this very short presentation as quickly as possible because I know when you guys present questions that's going to take up the bulk of the discussion. The presentation I have today is with my colleague Rebecca Robinson, who can't un, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. So it's just me on my own today. So I'm just gonna give you the basics of censorship. All right. Of course, just like the United States with the Hays Code and their own censorship sensibilities, our history of censorship begins when we were a colony, I.E.A .E British colony. So in 1936, um, we were still a colony. They started, um, they created the Cinematograph Act, which unfortunately we are still guided by today was the legislation that was bit, was brought across to obviously manage content that was coming into the space, particularly with new Hollywood going through their own issue of their own issues of censorship, changes in media, um, content regulation as well as their national body MPAA was being established. Um, we are a independent. Um, observatory discretionary board by the government of Trinidad and Tobago. So we are not involved with any of the national um, film groups, any private film groups, any TV film body. In, a, in tandem with the fact that we used a 1936 legislation, we have some discretionary power and technically, in our current day-to-day -day operations in 2023, or for the unforeseeable future, or any re in the recent past, technically we don't censor films, and we will get more into that later on. But because the act speaks about film reels, for those of us that were alive to know about 35 millimeter film that was prevalent in the cinemas at that time that made the process of censorship possible. How that would work is the censors would go into a splicing room and any content that they deemed inappropriate, they would be able to physically splice the reels out and then put them back together so that whatever content may be considered inappropriate could be taken out. And of course, if it was too untenable, this may or may not include banning a film. I have a fun fact for you guys. Even though we are the censorship board, we don't really ban anything. Surprise! And you can think about all of the movies that you would have wanted to see. May think of having as some may think of having some level of contention or controversy. We don't ban it. Um, the last movie that was actually banned was The Last Temptation of Christ in 1988, I believe. So when you go as far as that, you begin to recognize that there are other things at play that determine what actually shows in the cinema and whatnot. 
Now, unlike our most recent iteration of the board, which I'm a part of, which has been um, in, how do I phrase this? We've been nominated and renewed since 2016. Prior to us, there was a heavily, heavily, there was heavily, in, they were heavily influenced and board members will primarily comprise of the members of the IRO. For those of you all that don't know, that's the Interreligious Organizational Board that governs all religious groups within Trinidad and Tobago. If you are interested in reading the act, you can see the link below. You can literally just go into um, Google, type in Cinematograph Act 1936 Trinidad and Tobago, and you would be able to see the legislation which we currently work under. Okay. <clears throat> so who comprises the board of directors? In this current iteration, the Board of Film Sense of Trinidad comprises a representative quorum of the entire society of Trinidad and Tobago. So this includes legal practitioners, educators, policymakers, national security, average citizens, telecommunication personnel, and film industry stakeholders, distributors, exhibitors, and persons like myself who are filmmakers. So basically, we want to have a general consensus of what comprises society and the laws that pervade our land. So we don't just, um, we don't rate movies or give them ratings based on how we feel or based on hearsay. We are guided by legislation. And I, and I have to make that clear. We are guided by legislation. Not only legislation of the, the Cinematograph Act, but also things like the Children's Act we are guided by the laws within the constitution of Trinidad and Tobago. And these things also help make determinations of what is acceptable on screen. And therefore, it determines at what level these films are rated. So our mandate when we got um, nominated in was not to censor anything, but to appropriately rate and segment content in its rightful designation. So why have a board of films of censors? And I go back to say content management is based on countries, laws, cultural norms, and value system. I get this question all the time because we tend to, in this part of the world, we are aware of the MPAA standard, which is the United States standard. And because the United States has a very large marketing engine that feeds into most, if not all of the Western world, we tend to think of, why don't we just adopt their standard? And that is not the case. So what I want to show very quickly, because um, I see Kwesi Hulda has a question. I want to show um, the, hold on then. Yeah, I want to show the an equivalency of house ratings work in different countries and spaces. So let me just share that very quickly. So as you can see here on my screen, you can look at different variations of how different countries. Are, are you all able to see it? Yes, we can see it. All right. Yeah, we can see. Different countries, including other countries in the Caribbean, have their own boards. And they are based on the sensitivities and the laws and the cultural norms. So for instance, in Argentina, as you can see right here, everything is permitted up until 13. 13 is basically their rated R. And then 16 is a restrictive rating. Go all the way up until 18 plus. You look at Australia, for instance. Of course, Australia has two different... um regions because they, they are a coastal region and they have two time zones. 
But of course, in one part of Australia, it's just everything is general right up until 15. Because in places like the United Kingdom and Australia, the moment you do your GCEs, the moment you're 15 years of age, you're eligible to work. And therefore, you are an adult. When you go into spaces such as the Middle East or um, Singapore, you have extremely restrictive ratings. When you go to places like the United, like Switzerland, Sweden, or previously where we saw um, Belgium or Austria, they have their content demarcations of very flexible because of their culture. So let's take Game of Thrones, for instance, which according to the television guidelines is TVMA, um, which is suitable for audiences over 18 years and 17 years and over 18 years and over. Of course, in places like Brazil, those, re those restrictions will drop down to like 14, 15, 16. So if, if you have Netflix like us, we are under the Latin American guidelines and it's headquartered in Brazil. So you would notice um, R-rated films, films that carry a TVMA in the United States, those might have a 16 years and over rating on Netflix forward jurisdiction. Places like Austria, Europe, they are a lot more flexible. So a, a show, hypothetically, in a non-sexual context, a father getting ready for work and he is fully nude, full frontally nude, that can be in an all ages block once it's not presented within a um, sexual context. And of course, we have an idea, we, we have a greater idea of the United States because they would have come through the MPE, the MPAA would have been birthed out of the different community groups like the religious groups, the morality groups that they had in the US and they would have originally either banned films and then they would have had a national incentive to have a national board. Then they had the Hayes Code where it would have been a guideline for screenwriters where sex couldn't be shown on screen, any infidelity, crime must be punished. And then of course that was done away within the seven, if, if the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, as films started to, um, as filmmakers started to go against these films, but they garnered so much, it, they had to go into classification, the MPA had to move into the classifications as we know today, in order to fulfill economic impact. That is what really came. PG-13, for instance, was, was only, only came in the 80s. And those were driven by commerce. So ratings are guided by national laws, legislation, guidelines, and cultural norms as they shift. They aren't determined by what we want to do or our own discretion. Yeah? So just going back to the presentation very quickly, because I know everybody would have some questions as well. It's time check. Okay, we're doing well for time. So how does the current board operate? As I mentioned before, the current mandate of the board is suitable classification of films. The reason we are called the Board of Film Censors is because that's what the legislation that we are under calls us. However, I can tell you we are in the process of trying to get legislation passed that not only helps the industry, but also changes the purview and the look because nobody wants to hear the word censorship. What we are is a rating and classification board. And of course, once legislation is changed, that would, you know, give the public a better manner. And more than that, take our current operation into the contemporary society. So we do not censor movies. 
We don't cut films. We don't ban them because, of course, nobody uses 35 millimeter film. All films come digitally. And if you're dealing with major distributors, they come on digital cinema packages, which are sent via silver uploads online or a physical drive with keys are given to the cinemas, which means we have no access to cut them and make alterations. They come as is. And of course, distribution, international distributors are not going to allow that to happen anyway in the, con in the current space of the film world. Like I said before, the board is guided by the legislation of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Like I said, some documents that are considered, the Cinematograph Act, the Children's Authority Act, and we do consultation with persons within the various ministries, as well as professionals. So in tandem with the Children's Authority, when we came up with our own rubric to determine ratings uh, in terms of what the rating descriptors that we came up with are, we would have consulted the ministry, we'd have consult, we'd have consulted national security, we'd have consult, we'd have made, we'd have had consultations with psychologists and we would have had meetings with them on the board as stakeholders of society so that we are not alone to ourselves. Each censorship is conducted by three persons on the board of directors. So if I see Nigel Thompson is here, Nigel Thompson and Film TT would have just done mixed up. They would have sent that film to three, they would have sent it to the secretary. The secretary would send that to three designated board members. We all meet, we watch the film. We look at our rubric based on what our descriptors and the weighted score of that rubric. Then we sit down and use our human discretion. And then we have three people because we have at moments come at an impasse and we would have to discuss it and come up with a suitable rating because somebody may have less sensibilities towards blood and sensuality. Somebody may be more lenient to that. Somebody may be a little more stringent with LGBTQTIA theme, somebody may be more lenient, and we have to look at those varying levels. That's why we have three people so that two people can outvote the one, or we can discuss it otherwise so that there is levels of impartiality. Um, and of course, the board's duties are guided by the rating descriptors, as I mentioned before, developed with consultations by government legislation. So what is rating about? These are some of these are our current rating guidelines that we use for our rating descriptions in addition to rubrics that we would have developed. We have some new ones that are being developed, but of course those things cannot be put out to the public until it is passed in legislation. So you can see here, all ages, a product which all ages have access contains no nudity, sex, graphic violence, and nothing in theme or language which is in the view of the board offensive to parent or younger viewer. The child should not be scared by the content and theme, if any, should not upset the child. PG, a product where the board advises parents to exercise discretion in approving access to children under the age of 10 years. Any person under the age of 10 years must be accompanied by a parent or guardian or authorized adult. The content may include some mild gestures, infrequent, crude, or discriminatory language or humor. Adult thematic elements, brief or partial nudity without sexual context, implied sexual theme, scary moments, infrequent contextual violence, no drug content is present, tobacco or alcohol may be displayed. So you that's basically your your Madagascar is where you hear people obscure F-bombs by having a noise go over it or um, in minions where you see the minions in humorous context, you see them reveal their butt cheeks for humorous intent. Um, of course, mild horrors, obviously drugs are illegal, so therefore drug content can't be present, but minor use of cigarettes 
or an adult having a drink, if it borders on alcoholism, that's where it begins to move into other classifications. PG-13, oh, and this one is for the parents. A product where the board strongly cautions parents to consider greater discretion in approving access in some material may be particularly inappropriate for children under the age of 13. Persons under 13 must be accompanied by a parent or guardian or authorized adult. The content may include mild and frequent sexual content, partiality, crude gestures, some moderate language and innuendo, crude humor, mature and suggestive themes, scary and or frequent action where there is little to no bloodshed present, no drug content is present, tobacco or alcohol may be used. And the major, the major culprit of this is your Marvel films. Disney and Marvel, because PG-13, as most people will know, is the golden rating. And PG-13 does a very good job of stepping to the edge. And as films continually progress, that PG-13 bar is shifting. So, and when it happens, the people who get the flack is the board, it is the cinemas. Because when you look at films like Avengers, Infinity War, where your, where your children's favorite characters disappear, or the violence and the tone gets very darker, and children cry and complain to the cinemas because Spider-Man and their favorite heroes, the kids have nightmares. But there's a rating there to not just block children, but it also is awareness for adults to know what type of content they're going to consume. Because sometimes parents just look at the poster, Hollywood and Marvel are marketing behemoths. So they are going to segment their product in a way that makes everybody want to see it. And then when you go into movies like Multiverse of Madness, where you have characters getting their heads blown off, but they don't show it explicitly and they push it right to the edge and people get scared. That's where the great area comes in and discretion is extremely advised. Now, in Trinidad and Tobago, we're getting into the 14, 16, and 18 years and over territory. So in the US, where you have a R rating for R rated film, where you have a soft R, a hard R, that's where 14 and 16 comes in. 18 years and over is generally reserved for like those really, really hard R's and your NC-17 art films, that can be very um, explicit, graphic, but of course it's not pornographic. So sometimes you get films like that in the European Film Festival, um, what have you, in film festivals, and we have guidelines accordingly. So 14 years and over, a product where the board restricts access to persons on, under the age of 14, the content may include mild to moderate sexual content with partial nudity and sexual intent, infrequent, infrequent moderate to strong crude language and innuendo, crude humor, mature and or suggestive themes, terror and or frequent intense action violence where there is moderate bloodshed. And this is a minimum rating at which content related to drugs may be presented. A product. 16 years and over, a product where the board restricts access to person under the age of 16. This may contain some adult material, including moderate to strong coarse or profane language, infrequent moderate graphic and or intense violence, suggestive themes, moderate nudity with sexual intent, moderate sexual content, drug abuse, and any combination of these where the board advises parents to consider greater discretion in improving access children under 16 are strictly prohibited. So this is where, you know, films with, um, so let's take, for instance, you have The Expendables, that might get a 14 years and over, but a film like um, 13 Strong might more into the 16 years and over, because while both may be violent, the threat, the context of, terrorism, the context to which they may, for example, in a scene, show the making of a bomb and get into some of the science of it 
And then of course, while the expendables, they may be running around killing hundreds of people in an indiscriminate way. Even though you are, let's say a terrorist act of somebody being beheaded on camera for their loved ones on live news, even though it may not be explicitly shown the, the threat of that situation and then some, and then the horrors of it, the issues of bloodletting and some sort of those things as an example, of course, those things can, of course, be more traumatic. And of course, those of us who consume cinema in terms of the tonality, the mood and the overarching um, mood tone and graph the visceral graphic nature of it because it's something that draws nearer to real life. Those things have to be given a little more discretion in terms of how you demarcate. So it's like you said, we are not banning anything, but we have to classify based on what is presented. And of course, 18 years and over, a product where the board restricts access under the age of 18 and may contain strong, frequent, graphic or intense violence, sexual or aberrant behavior, extensive or explicit drug use, um, profane, obscene language, and strong adult teams are a combination of these elements. So there are very few films that come from Hollywood that would fall into this bracket. This would be your art house films, your films that carry an NC-17, or those films in Hollywood that are really, really graphic and extreme. Of course, for those are people who may ask, this does not include pornography, because pornography by law is illegal. Any of you that will have were alive in the 80s or beyond knew that cinemas after hours would show what they would call blue movies but of course these cinemas they would be they would they would be take they would be taking a risk because there would be stories news articles talking about police raids happening on these things all the time all right so the part that people don't know how to get your film rated by law, all content that is for public exhibition, paid or not, must carry a rating. It, that it and it has that has been viewed by the board of film censors of Trinidad and Tobago. So I'll just pick on Nigel again. If Nigel Thompson decides I am making a five-minute film and I want to show that in the middle of uh, feel in a secondary school to raise money and I use my own projector and my own laptop it must carry a, a rating otherwise it is illegal once you are advertising or makes it public it must carry a rating some of the only exemptions you have are like in a university space where they have a public lecture and therefore the film is used as part of a lecturing tool. But the moment you get into public displays and you mark it as public, it must be rated. Hence why when you buy your own DVD, it says FBI warning, copyright. This is for private home viewing alone. So the moment, and it says in US law, once you cross a particular number, I think numbers like five or 10 or whatever, it's no longer a public viewing and therefore you have to get um, licenses. With that being said, just be, so even if you decide not to show your own local film that you have access to, you can't say, oh, well, for fun reason, I'm going to show Frozen. That is also illegal because the exhibitors who bring the films down, even though they may or may not enforce it, um, after a film has come out of cinema, the people that bring the movies down, the exhibitors, and sell them to the movie towns, the cinema ones, the cinemas eight, they are also responsible for the DVD sales and any further distribution. So technically speaking, if Nigel Thompson says, well, my daughter class, after we want to do a fundraiser, we're going to show Frozen for the school. If the distributor for Disney gets wind of it, if they so choose, they can take you to court, they can call police and issue a cease and desist. Similarly, the board 
if your film has not been rated, can, your, your event can be issued a cease or desist because to protect the public, your film must carry a rating. That's all it needs to have, a rating. So, and this has happened before. I can give you the, a primus it. And with this, I'm going to take a pause. I'm going to pause the recording. Can somebody pause? Yeah, let's blow it in. So yeah, as I was saying, to get your film censored, it's a very simple process. You contact the email to which the secretary, or you can call the secretary WhatsApp. You could even WhatsApp the secretary or send an email. You send your film, you send a link to it. They will send you a, a they will tell you what the cost of the film is. The cost of to rate a film is pennies on the dollar. Okay, we had to do a bunch of algebra and math so that you don't have to do it. We literally, because in the law, it is, the price is based on length of feet of film reel. We are still governed by that today. So we on the board had to sit down and be like, okay, our film is an hour and a half. There's 24 frames per second of film. Okay. So therefore, mathematically, that is X amount of meters of reel. If this is the amount of frames, if this is 35 millimeter, it's going to be this long. We have to multiply this by this. Okay, this is a minute of film by length. So the equivalency of that in a minute of film is basically a dollar and some change. So it's about a dollar and change, approximately a dollar per minute. And, you know, if you go through places like the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival, they will get your rating for you because they have to get the ratings for their festival to run. So if you can get your ratings done through an organization or a festival, it's an easy way for you to get a free rating. Most of us who make short films, well, they're probably not going to charge you for a film less than 20 minutes. Because the, gov the government really doesn't, isn't going to probably penny pinch you for $20, $5 for your short. If you have a feature, it's generally inexpensive. The process is very easy. You go, the secretary tells you which government office to go and pay. You pay, you show her your receipt, you get your rating immediately. Because most times, most of us send films via links. So they would send them to us. We send a rating right back within a couple of hours, couple of days. So by the time you pay, the secretary already has the rating, the discretionary rating. And as such, you get, as soon as you show the receipt, you get the rating issued to you. And trust me, it's very easy. It's a very simple process, but we do end up in contravention of the law and not from independent filmmakers, but from the people who are part of the industry. Sometimes we see in the newspapers, in the radio, they put up films and ratings and ads we've had, and the films have not been rated yet. Sometimes the ratings will have to be withheld because they haven't um, sent through their payments yet. We have issues with cinemas taking it upon themselves to rate films based on how they feel and not the governing body of the National Board of Film Censors. And like I said, we don't ban anything, but we would have instances where um, religious organizations, um, there was a film recently that I would have censored probably earlier this year, and the Catholic board decided it was heresy. So they, we didn't ban the film, but they in their publication, they would say, because this film speaks about Mary, the mother of God, we consider it heresy, and therefore we strongly advise that none of our clergy members or otherwise go see this film. That's what they do, but we as the board don't ban anything. So, summary, why we have a censor, board of censors, we have to classify based on our laws, litigation, our national values and cultural environment for better or for worse but primarily the law to determine 
what is appropriately classified for our public consumption. What does the board do? We classify films primarily. We do enforcement as well. Sometimes it might involve us physically going to a, a cinema to ensure that, just checking my time, because I have to go quickly. Sometimes it requires us going to the cinema physically to ensure that the ratings are displayed correctly and that there are no minors in the wrong film without guardians present or otherwise. Otherwise we will write you up to the government and they will deal with you accordingly. How to reach the board of film censors? You can take this number down. You could email us at these two emails. You could also contact us through our Facebook page, Board of Film Censors Trinidad and Tobago on Facebook, where we try to give a list of the films that we rate monthly because on average, we rate something like 30-something films a month. Trailers and posters as are included as well because those have to be rated. And when film festivals come around, my personal record is I've watched something like 127 hours of movies in the span of a couple of days. Thank God for subtitles. So I could, you know, at least watch them on 2x speed. But it's not all, it's not as fun as people think. We watch movies every couple of days and it's not a, a full-time job. It's a duty to society. So most of us have to leave our day jobs, go rate these films and then go back to our day jobs. And we do this multiple times a week and it's a very small few of us. So with that, any questions? I know that was a lot to digest. Yes, you have a few questions. Kwasi Holder, then Cecile and Sario. Bring them, bring them come. <laughs> Mr. Holder. Okay. All right, good evening. Um, my question was already answered. So thanks okay, very great. much. Uh, Cecile? Hi, good afternoon. I had several questions, one of which was answered. You said that you you guys were working on the um on revising the act, I believe, the cinematography yeah. act. So that's fine. Um I if my if I'm shooting a short film and it's only being screened in foreign festivals, uh would I still need to get it rated down here? Uh, or was it or does, does it only require being rating if it's being shown here specifically? It does not require a rating if it's only for foreign festivals. However, local rating does help. Because okay. when you issue your film and say that this is the, when you submit your film to a festival and you can include in your description that this is rated, this was rated X and Y in my own jurisdiction for these content descriptors, because the board will, we don't just say 14 years and over, we will say 14 years and over for adult language, adult situations, brief or moderate nudity, in frequent adult language. We have the marketers to say moderate violence, whatever. Those things allow programmers to, because remember programmers are programming hundreds of films many a times. And of course, they're not going to look at your film in entirety. So it gives them an idea of, with the content, the scriptures and the rating, where and how to appropriately um, program it, of course. So it does help in terms of international equivalency as well, but it is not needed for international film festivals just primarily to guide the jurisdiction of Trinidad and Tobago for public protection is generally to protect the public so that if Jody Marie decides to make um I don't know Carnival Queens and Coconuts that, hypothetically whatever that film contains the public needs to know so that people don't go into the cinema and then they're like, oh my God. Because the first people they're going <laughs> to do, the first thing they're going to do is write a letter to the editor. And the letter to the editor tends to be no holes barred. And they crack up. The first people they target is the government. They target the exhibition space, that's the cinema. And then they come onto the board of censors. So it's a demarcation so that the public, because all of us know, you see a horror rated 16 years and over, you're probably. Not every night you're going to want to watch something you might want something lighter. So it's not just to guide and protect children, but it's to guide your filmmaking practices as an adult as well. I see Nisha has a hand up. Or oh, you have any further questions, Mr. Cecil? I do actually have two more questions. Two more, Mario, then Nisha. All right, yes. Cecil, go ahead. 
Um, how does one get on the rating board? <laughs> you said, guys said that you were kind of short staffed, apparently, or something. Right. Like so, that. unfortunately, it's not a case where you can go and apply for a job. It's Think of it like jury duty. So, uh -huh. they look at a quorum of people who make up a, a quorum of society from government, um, from... So, they basically look at a quorum of society and they say, here's what. We want to nominate you to be on the board. It's not that it's not that I picked up one and I was like, oh, yeah, can I be on the board? I got a letter and I was like, oh, this person, this organization nominated you as a filmmaker to sit on this board with your other national members, whether they be doctors, lawyers, teachers, people who work on government policy, so that you have a rounded view of society. So it's like jury duty. You get um nominated. And then you serve a two-year term, after which the government decides whether they reinstate you or not. Ah, okay, understood. And finally, um, I'm working currently working on a feature that is about a young woman who is, uh, well, a, a teenager who is being sexually abused by a relative. Mm -hmm. So there are understandably concerns about... Mm -hmm. um, what it gets shown on screen. So I have been writing it in a way that you don't actually see anything done on screen, but the implications right. of what has happened and what is going to, well, what could possibly happen are very strong. Mm -hmm. In your estimation, if you don't actually see anything really happen on screen, but it's just implied, would that fall more into a 14 or 16? Because the idea is to advise, is to show, is to get young people, especially girls, mm -hmm. who are likely to be in situations like this to understand that they don't have to stay in situations like this. And it is well, not that, a Well, at the end of that comes down to the final edit. As mm -hmm. a filmmaker, I will tell you, make your film however you want it. With my sensors cap on, that can only be determined based on how that sequence is done. Because even if you don't show something, let's take the Saw movies, for instance. Mm -hmm. Saw will give you the initial representation of violence. And in one or two scenes, they may show it um, in a very graphic way. But I think what tends to make our tools killer makes us uncomfortable are those sequences where they do a lot of quick flashes and then you see the trauma of the person's face, the screams in terms of how they do the montage editing and then mm -hmm. close-ups and, you know, even making use of things like lights that could cause epileptic seizures, those sorts of things, sound design. So even if you don't explicitly show it, determinant on how it is edited to evoke particular emotions out of your audience that can still make a determination for how graphic something is or is not. So it's really dependent on your dealing with the sensitivity of the matter because ultimately um, sexual abuse is illegal mm -hmm. and therefore if it is represented it can warrant a 14 year and over rate uh, 14 year and over rating. However, if it is implied that could be a PG-13. Or you know, let's say um, it's a coming-of-age story and you see the young girl go in and an uncle goes into the room and you never see or hear anything. And then you flash forward to another scene and it's not expressly spoken about, but you see the change in the character. Then that can warrant a PG. Mm -hmm. Because, okay. you know, like in those shows like My Girl, like we would have grown up in the 90s, My Girl, or um, Breakfast Club or one of these things where... As an adult, you get it, yes. but it's not explicitly shown. That might fall into the PG category. So really, it's really, at the end of the day, determinant on your treatment uh, when you film and edit it, because you can write one thing and choose to represent it differently. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. Yes. All right, Sario, then Nisha. I, yeah, this, um, well, first off, this was a really good session. I really appreciated it. Uh, my question is, when you said public exhibition, what exactly do you mean by that? Because, I mean, we can understand um, cinema screens, but is there any other uh, avenue that is considered that? Is TV considered public exhibition? 
you know, what areas are considered that. Suffice to say anything outside of your home where it is marketed, advertised, or shown. So for instance, if you have a restaurant and you decide to show your private film, if, if the restaurant is within its operate in its operation hours, and you decide to show your private film during operation hours, that can be considered public exhibition. If you decide to close the restaurant down and you invite your friends, because people have private screenings, those are fine. If you are having a private screening, maybe in the case of to get audience reviews, to go make edits, that's different. Anything that can be stumbled upon by the public, anything that is advertised, whether it be free or, or not, the moment you are making it accessible to the public, whether it be, you may not advertise it, but you put up a big screen on the savannah. Once it can be encroached upon by the general population, that is considered a public screening. Okay, so you're saying that television is not considered the same? Huh? The television is not considered the same. Television is public. So for instance, okay, okay so we have no jurisdiction sense. over free to over over so television is a different scale. Um the TAT deals with that specifically in the legislation. TAT and us and the board will have a little more purview over that and streaming and whatever, but of course. There's a lot of different implications, and we can't get into that now because those things aren't have not gone to cabinet, they have not been approved, they have not been consulted. So those things are moot right now. Right. In terms of in television, their classifications of television. There's free-to-air television, which generally occurs within a geographic space. Then you have um network television, which would encompass your NBCs, your TNTs. Your BBCs, those stations. And then you have your pay per view stations, which would be your HBOs, your stars, whatever. Mm -hmm. So you pay for, when you pay, when you sign for a cable subscription, you pay to receive whatever content those networks are allowed to show. In terms of CCN TV6, TTT, CNC3, which show on our national shows freely because you don't need to pay for cable to have access to these stations. Mm -hmm. Those stations have to have a rating to show whatever content there is on television. Right. Yeah. I, I and, they, and they know this because they do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks. Thanks a lot. I asked that question because when considering distributing mm -hmm. across the Caribbean, um, Film censorship is a question. Film rating. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, film rating. <laughs> mm. But, you know, um, in any context, actually, many of the, the countries across the Caribbean still label it as a censorship board. Of course. Right? You know, so. And I could tell you. In that context. And I could tell you, even in terms of distribution, remember, television stations that are free to air have their own guidelines. And so when you watch mm -hmm. a movie on HBO versus on. TNT or USA or whatever, it would say this film has been modified to fit the format because if you know anything about television, they have something called the watershed yeah. period. Certain content can't be shown within specific times. And similarly with Trinidad and Tobago television, even I myself have gone through this. My film would have had a rating of, let's say, a PG, a PG-13, and even the state, but then the station would receive it with the rating and would still have to even make further modification blur out certain words, um, cut out certain scenes, even though it is, it receives a rating because the television also has their mandate as a national free-to-air station to protect their viewers and as such certain things cannot be shown in the middle of the day on TTT or at all on TTT because they are a government station. TV6, which is semi-private, I believe on CNC3, that's private, because they are free-to-air stations, they still have parameters and hours to which certain content can't be displayed. Right. So even beyond our rating, the stations have their own mandates as well as guided by the law. Um, I just want to ask Nisha, 
Sorry, sorry. I wanted to ask Nisha to pause for one second. I see Diane hand is up, and only because she's TV, I yeah. think that her contribution to Sario's question would be ideal. Diane, that's know better. Yeah. You want me to respond to Tazaria's question? I'm sorry, just a call came in while I was listening. No, we were talking about TV, so I just thought it would have been ideal for you to contribute as well, be in state and programming, if that was along the lines of the question you had. Okay. Um, my question, however, had to do with taking things out. Um, in 2019, we did some screening of some local films in Woodbrook in a park. Uh, we did, we um, contact the board and wanted to just not experience, uh, we we were working through the process of getting the, of the proper ratings so that we can take it out. But I wanted to ask if the, is it that there's a process now that films already uh, attach a rating to their films uh, for screening because the films that we had that we were going to use, they didn't have any ratings on them. And we had to go through the process of contacting the board. And the in that process, I think because of the timing of it, um, it, it presented some challenges in terms of at the time we were going to screen and the time that the request came in and all of those things. So I was just wondering if we receive um, content for screen um, for air, um, is there the is it on the filmmaker to acquire that um before working a deal with the television station or is it at that point that it with the television station that they television because of course like you said and you so rightly said we work with tat um and the tat what they have right now is guidelines and like you said it's mute and we're all waiting for that to be um but we still work within their guidelines because they are still very active. And if they see things as as much as everybody feel carnival is free up yourself, TAT will send us something <laughs> during that time. And it has happened. Um, so um, because once it hits the air, their whole thing is they have a whole section on the safety of children. They have a whole section in the regs. So, um, so my question is just in terms of working, in terms of collaborations uh, and the, the small screen, thank you for bringing that up to Zara. <laughs> um, what is doable or but, already there? So I would say if you all are looking for local content, the best place to get them from would be the film festivals or the filmmaker themselves. Let the filmmaker ensure that they have a rating. Mm -hmm. Or so like when, TTT did stuff with um the Mexican embassy. Yes. We'd have rated those things. My film would have already had a rating from years ago. And even still then, TTT would have had to like blur out one or two lines with the subtitles, whatever. Right. Um, if you, make, but however, if you're dealing with a filmmaker, let's say you're making a straight to broadcast film for TTT, you are now the executive producer. So... Right it would be of your best interest to get your filmmakers and your producers to get that finished product to you, even if it is a rough so that the board can rate it. Now, of course, if the final edit is significantly different from the original release, and that applies to all films. So if Nigel decides he wants to release the director's cut or mixed up and it have like 10,000 expletives in it, that is considered a completely different film and therefore has to be re-rated with a different title, year, date, all of that stuff. But it would be in the station's best interest to ensure right. that the filmmakers they deal with have a rating beforehand. Right. Okay. All right. Very helpful. Thank you. All right. And last but not least, Nisha, my apologies. The floor is yours. Okay. So just for clarification, as a filmmaker, if I wanted a rating for film and public exhibitions, I go to um the Film Census Board and... If I go to TAT, that's for TV. TAT will do um ratings for TV. Um, mm, no, TAT is the authority for TV. So if you're doing a film, your film rating still goes across to TV because technically, in the law, any the 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 law is old, and anything that is on a screen publicly 
is under our jurisdiction, but the okay. broadcasting code is under TAT. Okay. So the film has to have, if does the the, the, the board, the film has to have a rating, but it is still up to the guidelines for free to air television with TAT as Miss Robertson would know. That's determinant on what the rules for free to air broadcasts are. So just because your film has a rating, that's great. But that does not mean it's appropriate for TV. It still may have to be modified for TV. Okay. Because that's because I mean technically that's why game of, like television. If let's say TTT 10, 10, 15 years from now, the original run of Game of Thrones is done. And they can purchase it for syndicated television the way that you can do with Baywatch or any of these other shows and purchase it on pennies on a dollar to get the first season of Game of Thrones. Obviously, obviously, even if we were to give a rating, there is no way with the broadcast code and the, the Children's Authority and the Protections Act that that covers would they be allowed to show on a national station with their incentives, the full unedited version of Game of Thrones? It would have to be modified for TTT. Yeah. Okay, and last question really quickly. We spoke oh, about I, I, film, I, exhibition, I, yeah. film exhibition and TV. Is there any censorship rating or anything like that for online streaming? Is that existing as yet? Whether Ooh. it's like YouTube or even Netflix, for example. Oh, so that's is the kind of worm. That is a that is a kind of worms, and that is being spoken about with government right now. In terms of how that is done, it doesn't seem impractical. Because we have to remember, Trinidad is a blip on the map. Anybody that knows about um broadcast satellites. They are not going to move an entire singular satellite so that Trinidad, Jamaica, and the few islands that speak English gets the English speaking broadcast channels. That is not because remember, these guys, these major corporations, they're looking at numbers. So Netflix, we don't have enough of a number body for them to even say, okay, we're going to reprogram all of the content on Netflix with ratings for the English-speaking Caribbean. No. Net our Caribbean, Netflix Trinidad, is guided by the rating systems of what they brushstroke as Netflix ratings for Latin America. Because what is 18 years and over in the US might be 16 years and over in Brazil, and therefore Netflix is going to rate that content accordingly. So... To your question of internet and television right now, there are discussions about it. They want it to be done in legislation. However, it's not active. And I have no idea in terms of how they would do that. It would probably end up falling onto TAT or a completely other organ a complete other organization would have to be built because to police that is extremely extremely difficult especially since and then for more and more than that it will also require the government and national security to block ports because i'm going to pause this here yeah good question any other questions yes one more before we end sario asked um, does the board provide verification of the ratings provided Yes, I believe you get a certificate of your ratings that you can receive from the office or because once you have your receipt, you get your rating as well. So you got a certificate with your rating that you can carry around, but you will also have a digital email from the secretary that lets you know the rating classification of your film. So, yeah. Agreed. That is correct. You do get a receipt when you pay and they will email you as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And to Shea Bess, and of course, on behalf of Film TT, we want to thank you, as well as the Board of Film Censors Trinidad and Tobago for this lunch and learn session. 
And we do want to let you all know we do have some other sessions coming up regarding the rebates and, of course, business registration. So stay locked to our social media so you can have sessions further to these and any concerns, any other questions or sessions you would like us to have in terms of us building the ecosystem of film, um, you can let us know as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you, Shay. Have a lovely Friday and enjoy your holiday. And Shubh Diwali to our Hindu friends. Shubh Diwali. <laughs> Thank you for this very engaging session and interesting and informative. Thank you for having me. All right, guys, have a good one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.